so I'm sitting in a beautiful park here in Carlisle Bay, Barbados and uh, uh, it's just amazing here it's uh, right on right on the water here you can see that uh, there's all kinds of uh, boats in the water all kinds of stuff going on but I'm not here to talk about the beach although I love to talk about the beach and be happy to do that all day uh, really what I'm here to do to talk about today is uh, trucking in Barbados. I've been doing a little thing since I've been around um, where I've been uh, always fascinated by the trucks in Barbados and uh, the Bajan people. We come here every year and it's an amazing time. And so I just thought I would uh, share with you some of the thoughts I had on it. Uh, you'll see by some of the pictures here there's a variety of trucks here in Barbados. Everything from little cute little pickup trucks and straight trucks to the tractor trailers we see at home. You won't see anything like a giant Peterbilt. Probably the biggest thing you'll see here is a uh, uh, 45, 48 foot containers uh, with cab overs. A lot of the old trucks come to these places, so you'll see a lot of the old trucks. But you know, one of the things I wanted to talk about was just the regulations. You know, like there's no scales here, there's very few police on the island, and things, uh, you know, we don't have the regulations that we have at home, but there's some really important things going on that maybe can work for our, our end of things at home as well as for the Beijing people here. And so I just thought, since I come here every year and I love this place, I would just do a little bit of an expose on the on the, the trucking uh, industry here in Barbados. So when I wanted to find out where they go, of course, everything's imported here on the island. So uh, if you're uh, in the island here, you, you know, everything comes by ship. So imports are their big thing. There's not really a manufacturing place around here. Uh, I was told to go to... Uh, uh, a place called import which is where the ships come in but uh, you've got to be security clearanced and all that to get in there so I wasn't able to get into that area uh, and there wasn't a whole lot of manufacturing around but one of the things I did find is that the roads here are very small and if you're uh, if you've never seen the roads here in Barbados um, they're just what we would call basically uh, city streets or secondary highways uh, not even secondary highways I'm gonna say city streets is uh, what they are and uh, really uh, they don't have any big expressways the way we see it they've got probably one or two and they're not what we would call expressways at home so uh, they don't have the length of vehicles that most of us have they have uh, smaller you know you'll see the fuel trucks are basically 30 foot pup trailers um, they do run some 45s here uh, but again they're using cab, cab overs and stuff uh, and most of this stuff is right-hand drive. So they drive the way that you do in England. Uh, so that's one of the reasons I don't drive a lot here. Uh, my wife kept saying, check out the other side of the road. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a good place to be. But there's some talent here. To get through some of these streets without hurting somebody or, uh, you know, is kind of pretty cool. Uh, I like the way that they use their horns. In, in, the, in North America, we use the horns basically to tell someone to take a hike. Here they use the horns to say hello, they let people in. There's still that courtesy factor which we've lost at home uh, and I think that's pretty cool here on the island. So that's one of the things I really love about it here, all the way from car drivers to truck drivers. Uh, they drive a little wilder than uh, probably some of us would at home, but um, you know what, That they, they know the streets like the back of their hands. Uh, so it's, it's not a bad deal here. Um, you know, I think we could probably use some of this talent at home. You know, we've had uh, we got a big driver shortage in um, in North America, as you know, and uh, we could probably be using some of these people. We could probably be looking at some of them as potential drivers for home. I know over the years, there's been a couple drivers that I've talked to that have um, uh, been taking the training at home, and then they just can't get sponsored. The immigration thing is what holds them up, and they're. You know, you'll find that if you talk to the people here, the people have a real strong ethic. Uh, time management something to be uh, <laughs> discussed, but uh, for most things, they have a strong will to succeed, and they just want the opportunities. They're willing to work hard. They just want the, the opportunity. And so I think we could be losing a lot of those people here in Barbados, um, or the Caribbean for that matter, that really want to get ahead. Uh, if we could find a way to bring them into the system here. One guy I was talking with, uh, um, suggested maybe the seasonal worker program which is a, a program for people who want to pick uh, their own um, they want to pick they come to Canada and they pick uh, strawberries or apples or whatever the fruit is that they're they're picking and they come at the same times the companies hire the same guys all the time and then it goes back to they come back to Barbados so this could be a, a something maybe we can somehow figure out how to do it I know there's a whole lot more training licensing all of that stuff but 
I think if we had a pool of drivers who uh, would be willing to come here in the summertime and and help out with the industry might be an opportunity for some to gain that experience, gain credentials to possibly come into the country and allow carriers to, to work with them. Uh, the cool thing is that the sponsorship programs, from the way I understand it, are not the way they are in Canada where a company sponsors the person to come up and work. Uh, it's sponsored by the government here and they find the people, clear them, all of that kind of stuff and then um, they're sent to particular companies part of the program. So. I think there's some opportunities here that might help our trucking industry. Um, I know a lot of people are going to say that doesn't fly. Well, you know what? It may not fly, but at least it's a it's a something to look into because maybe that's a, a way of helping uh, both countries. There's a strong Bayesian Canadian uh, tie here as well as with England. Uh, we're all part of the British Commonwealth, so a lot of people here already have family in Canada and stuff. So it's not that far a transition to get them up. Uh, get them up and working in Canada if we decide to do that road. But as far as trucking, um, they they do all the same things we do. Uh, it's a lot more of a delivery style operations here, uh, more so picking up at the uh, the containers go into uh, basically a distribution center for whichever company they're with, and then they will um, uh, then they'll be put out to. Uh, the smaller trucks which will deliver to the stores. There's no docks, there's no, there's no, uh, you know, big operations where people are backing into docks. You, you won't see a Walmart style uh, operation here. Uh, you know, trucks will come in and deliver from the different suppliers based on their needs. So uh, you don't see those big things at home. As far as regulations go, um, there's no scales here. There's very little police, like I mentioned, but, uh, they seem to do all right. You don't hear of some of the fatalities and stuff that we have in, in Canada. I think it's because of the courtesy level, we see more people uh, doing all right as far as um, there's not that giant hurry to get somewhere. They all seem to drive fairly fast, but they seem to do it in a point where it's getting there pretty well. So uh, maybe there's some things we can learn from their industry and certainly there's some things they can learn from ours. And uh, I know they wouldn't need the big safety people in the regulations because there's, I don't know how they're checked. I haven't talked to anybody about how they're checked that way, but uh, it might be a way of, um, and, uh, you know, they don't have scales to weigh trucks. So you do get that factor where you could possibly be overloaded, but I don't think there's heavy enough cargo here for really them to overload anything. Uh, other than the containers, everything is pretty well straight truck wise, and it's just a matter of loading. If I had to look at probably the biggest issue they have here is cargo securement. Um, things aren't really placed down. They're kind of just put in a truck. Sorry, I got stuff. Put in a truck here, and they're just, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully make it. You know, there might be one strap over there. The one thing you won't see at home that you do see here a lot is the people uh, actually driving with people in the back cargo area. You know, we all used to do that drive in the back of someone's pickup truck, but you don't see that anymore. So anyway, so uh, that's just my take on the trucking industry here in Barbados. Uh, probably boating is a bigger industry here, but uh, it's certainly a beautiful island. The people are, are very friendly, uh, have a strong work ethic, and certainly want to get ahead. And so uh, I think if we were smart as a, a nation up in North America, we would be uh, Canada and the U.S looking for drivers, the amount of drivers we're looking for, we may be wanting to look for some of these uh, Caribbean countries where they have the same mentality uh, as far as politeness and courtesy and uh, looking at those people. So I'm going to sign off now. I got to get, <laughs> I got another stressful day on the beach. You know how that goes. So anyway, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed that one show.